Good morning and assalamualaikum everyone. On behalf of Center for Private Sector Engagement, CPIE, SDPI, I, Zena Mumtaz Baloch, welcome you to today's webinar titled National SMEs Policy and Its Implication on International Trade. Before we start off with today's session, there are a few housekeeping rules. May I please request our speakers to keep their microphones off when they are not speaking to ensure good audio quality for everyone. Speakers are also encouraged to switch on their cameras, especially when they're speaking, if the network allows to do that without any disruptions. The webinar will be recorded and shared later for your kind preference. You are welcome to revisit the discussion later for, uh, and feel free to share it with your network. We also invite questions from our audience at the end uh, and, uh, and our colleagues at the end or as the session goes, please feel free to write them down in the chat box or in the Q&A box on the right side. Please have the chat box open in the chat window in the window so you, or you can also indicate that you want to speak by choosing the raise hand option at the right side of the chat window. The session is in bilingual. You can share your comments and your feedback or any, uh, or any uh, comments in Urdu or English language as per your convenience. Today's session is going to be moderated by Ms. Mahmoud Rashid, Research Associate at SCPI. Now I hand over the session to Ms. Mahmoud so we may officially begin with the proceedings. Thank you. Over to you, Mahmoud. Thank you very much, Zainab. Uh, thank you for providing us with the housekeeping rules. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank all our participants for taking out time from their busy schedules for this session. Uh, before I proceed to the question and answers and the uh, discussion that we're supposed to have on the topic, I'd just like to briefly introduce all of our panelists here. So firstly, we have Ms. Sahar Malik, who is the president of the Women Chamber of Commerce and Industry at Hall. Then we have uh, Dr. Ghulam Samad, who is the senior research specialist uh, at Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation Institute. Then we have Mr. Sharia Tahir, who is the deputy general manager at uh, External Relations Director Directorate at SNIDA. Then we have Mr. Mazhar Shahzad, who is joint director of State Bank of Pakistan. Uh, last but not least, of course, we have Dr. Hassan Dawood Bhatt, who is Senior Policy Advisor, SDPI. He will be joining us in a bit um, as soon as he wraps up his previous engagement. Um, with that, I'd like to move forward and come to the question and answer session. Perhaps, Ms. Summer, I could start off with you. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, in your opinion, how does the national SMEs policy of Pakistan address the specific challenges that are faced by women and businesses in accessing and participating in international trade? And also, um, what initiatives or the provisions are included in the policy to promote the interna internationalization of SMEs and enhance their competitiveness in global markets? Yes, Talek Komji, I'm Sahar Malik and currently the president of Women Chamber. Other than that, G, I would like to introduce myself uh, because I'm a, a practitioner of procurement and supply chain. So basically what the SME is facing and uh, what kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, we are expecting the growth uh, from the SME is just because of that, it's been to subsume major problem hai, that is of a uh, business ki supply chain or uski sustainability ki hi aati hai, which I believe that is one of the uh, main cause which has been faced by the SMEs. I see all the um, uh, jitne bhi corporates in Pakistan, they are very much particular about having a procurement specialist jo unki puri value chain ko dekha hote hai, and that person is a license holder by um, and uh, so that uski accountability ho sake, usko he can come under uh, some um, jo hai surveillance. But yaha pe problem ye hai ke when we want to grow the SMEs, we are not realizing that, you know, we have to make that thing very important for them to realize that, you know, um, uh, baki sari training se pehle jo hai na, we need to give them the training of uh, how to procure and how to build up their value chain. Wo jo, Usme Julak head, that is the one of the reasons that is not uh, making the economy uh SMEs and they are not participating or up near economy jo hai, wo bikul, uh, jo hai, uski wajah se zyada effect ho hai. Um uh, to be honest, Jitne bhi, uh have seen uh um jo hai, jo procurement and supply chain ki hai, they are the first 
जो एंड दे शुड बी लीडिंग एनी कंपनी मतलब वो एस एम ई हो कॉपरेट हो या वट एवर द स्मॉल इंडस्ट्री जिस भी है उन सब के लिए इट इज दू नो द मेन इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट द प्रोक्योरमेंट स्पेशलिस्ट नीड्स टू बी दन हु नीड्स टू लीड द होल डिपार्टमेंट रादर देन यू नो वी आर नॉट पेइंग अटेंशन के हाउ मच इम्पोर्टेंस अ प्रोक्योरमेंट एंड एस एम यू नो सप्लाई चेन पर्सन कैन बिल्ड ब्रिंग इन टू द बिकॉज दे नीड टू लीड द होल कंपनी रादर देन दे शुड बी लेड बाय द अदर पीपल तो यहाँ पे द मेन प्रॉब्लम विल ऑलवेज बी बिकॉज वी आर नॉट रियलाइजिंग द मेन कॉन्सेप्ट एंड द मेन प्रॉब्लम ऑफ यू नो वैल्यू चेन विच इज नॉट बी यू नो बीन एड्रेस प्रॉपरली बाय द एस एम कम्युनिटी सॉरी आई कैन नॉट हेयर यू
basically non financial advisory services and finally working for the women in the transition development. Next, uh, addressing the supply side challenges, uh, demand side challenges uh, is basically based on increasing the market opportunities for SMEs that includes the market accessibility and the public procurement. Next. The institutional mechanism includes the established framework that is the based on formulation of national coordination committee on SME development, strengthening the SMEDA institutional capacity and capacity building initiatives such as uh, formulation of SME registration policy portal, SME development plan, census of economic establishment, SME census, advocacy presence of uh, SME and SMEDA in uh, regulatory areas and analysis. There are some key issues identified uh, by the SME uh, uh, operation in Pakistan. Supply side issues may consist of the high policy rate of 21% announced by the state of Pakistan has made pending unworkable for the human selection of entrepreneurs. Uh, there has informal and illegal financing is more feasible for them uh, than uh, blocking of lack letter, of credit. Uh, has also affected the enterprises by facing delays in the import of raw material, machinery, and equipment, which led in producing less than operating capacity and delays in supply of the manufacturing products. Uh, analyzing the human capital and uh, analyzing the human and physical capital, outdated knowledge and technology, results in the low productivity, uh, whereas we have uh, high prices of energy is also a problem in the uh, at its full capacity. So the demand side. Uh, Demand side issues consist of the public procurement and the market accessibility that are, that are the hurdles faced by the SMEs. The market and uh, access to international market is an issue of great concern that needs to be addressed. The cost of production increases the price of local manufactured goods and that makes them less competitive in the international market. Additionally, the small businesses working in local and remote areas find it hard to assess the market within and outside the country. Due to lack of information, poor infrastructure, inadequate marketing, and logistics. One another major issue is of quality assurance of manufactured goods. Uh, at this point, the certification of products to declare the, the locally purchased goods fulfilling the international standards is very important. When the majority of SMEs are informally working under the diverse rules and procedures, then public procurement is a major challenge they are faced. So these are some issues which we later on. Addressed in the further discussion by the uh, respectable panelists. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Mani, for that extremely insightful presentation. I'd like to move back to the uh, discussion with my panelists again. Once again, Ms. Summer, I'd, I'd like to come back to you. So, uh, like you said, that uh, during the supply chain side, uh, so you're in the uh, supply side and uh, procurement side, and there are several challenges that you also mentioned that you face. Uh, but we, uh, keeping this in mind, we can't deny the fact that private sector engagement is highly important for international trade uh, to be properly established in Pakistan and, and for the economy to flourish, of course. It needs to be all-inclusive. Keeping that in mind, I just wanted to ask you, are there any specific incentives that support uh, or the support programs and the policy for uh, uh, the private sector and for firms like yourself? Um, and uh, do these uh, help to facilitate collaboration with foreign markets or not? Uh, Man, you're on mute. Uh, can't hear you. Yes, uh, actually, uh, you know, when I go to different institutions who wants to give the financial aid to these SMEs, and uh, they are very, uh, they are very, uh, they want to have the women inclusiveness, and to be honest, and they are very much, uh, you know, uh, very much uh, into that they want to support these SMEs. But the major, major uh, factor which is affecting that why we not, we cannot have a sustainability or in the SME is because of the, you know, um, a lack of, uh, uh, you know, uh, accountable procurement heads within our team. So uh, the way 
major issue which has been faced by the SME is, you know, whatever the government policies are, if we are not going to see the main people who in the both in the public and private sector who are going to, you know, uh, see the whole of the SME and how it is going to uh, be stable. Uh, that is going to bring no financial policies and no uh, nothing can be uh, you know most effective if we don't have accountable people who are looking after the main thing. The government people should be working with the private sectors to actually make sure that these SMEs can have a sustainable and they come into some kind of a uh, some kind of a uh, you know value chain and uh, uh, they can uh, you know beat the market because what i believe is we we are lacking in the product development sector as well you know we are very much uh, uh, you know familiar with the uh, financial inclusion technology and uh, you know branding and we we are uh, paying more attention for the hr rather than we are looking after the sustainability of the uh, value chain and uh, uh, the logistic warehouse thing and the import export that all depends on what a product which is being procured by the licensed procurement person who needs to uh, be accountable if he does wrong practices so this is something which i believe that policy needs to be according to uh, uh, you know see the sustainability of the um, uh, of SMEs rather than you know they need to focus on that rather than you know only focusing on the technology and financial inclusion because financial inclusion cannot you know survive without the sustainability of any SMEs and the growth will not uh, reflect in, at any point. Absolutely G, I agree with you that uh, uh, first of all public private partnerships are uh, definitely the future they need to be carried out and strengthened more so that uh, the country as, as a whole can benefit from it and of course flourish. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sahar. I'd like to move on to our next speaker now, uh, Dr. Samar. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question first regarding the national SMEs policy. G. So um, how do you, in your opinion, how does this policy aim to support the growth of SMEs in the country? And uh, what specific measures or strategies are included in the policy to enhance the competitiveness of uh, SMEs in the international trade arena? Thank, thank you so much, uh, Manu. Can you hear me? G, you're audible. Right. Uh, I think uh, if you allow me, uh, I can, uh, in a 10 minutes, uh, I think you have two broader questions that I want to highlight here in the context of the uh, SMEs. So in 10 minutes, let me very quickly discuss the three components that I think are very much important for today's discourse. Uh, the first one uh, that you uh, mentioned about the SMEs uh, uh, policies, my general uh, comment is that uh, I think in Pakistan, I would say, unfortunately, we did not address the last mile. We call them the last mile. The last mile is basically the issue of policy of implementations. Uh, unfortunately, we did not address very appropriately that how we can basically, once we formulate and design a policy, how we can implement it appropriately. So that is the first fundamental question, I think, that is very much important for the consideration of policy formulation and designing. I think the second uh, component of the SMEs 2021 is about the how we can basically reflect the ground realities whether the ground realities, and especially the ground realities about the skilled human resources that are available, and also the finances that are available, whether they are pragmatic and practical. So I think uh, uh, having uh, to know the, real, the ground realities is, again, one of the fundamental component for the successful implementation of the policy. And last but not the least, related to a 2021 SMEs policies, I think there should be a shared responsibility that my, my colleagues uh, in, in the discussion mentioned about those shared responsibilities, maybe across ministries, maybe across divisions, or maybe across the alliance ministries. There must be a shared responsibility and those shared responsibilities must be accountable so that we can have a successful policy. So this was a general context that how we can basically uh, formulate uh, a policy and how we can make it successful. Now coming uh, to the 
question that you asked about did how we can basically engage Pakistan SMEs with the um, with the uh, global and regional uh, SMEs and for the trade integration. And secondly, you are uh, concerned about the level of the competitiveness, how we can basically develop those level of competitiveness. If you look into the kind of uh, the current prevailing uh, SME status and your colleagues earlier mentioned in their presentation how much important the SMEs in Pakistan in terms of their GDPs, in terms of their employment is. But uh, I tried to focus on the material that I think has not been directly reflected in the policies document. Uh, and that are two. One that is about the sectoral breakdown of the SMEs in Pakistan. And I think knowing the sectoral breakdown of the SMEs is again very much important so that we can see how much SMEs in Pakistan that are engaged in manufacturing, how much they are engaged in the trade, and how much they are engaged in the services. And fundamentally, the second component that is, I think, very much important for today's discourse, especially for my, my, my questions, that is how much SMEs in Pakistan, they are basically engaged in exports and imports. So based on these two uh, components, let me jump into the uh, to the um, replies. The first one is if you look into the um, the sectoral breakdown of SMEs in Pakistan, merely I would say in manufacturing, when we add the agriculture to the manufacturing, that is around 21%. So out of the total SMEs, registered SMEs in Pakistan, we are around 21% who are basically doing manufacturing, um, manufacturing, I would say. So if you want to really develop the level of competitiveness, if you want to really integrate with the regional economies, I think you also need to, to consider that how we can basically strengthen the manufacturing uh, of the SMEs in Pakistan. And secondly, uh, that is about the exports and the imports engagement. And based on our Carrick Institute and ADB recent study, uh, the in Pakistan, out of the registered SMEs, around 14% of them, uh, they are engaged in the exports and import activity. If we compare ourselves with the regional economies, our number is quite low. So what again, uh, this motivate us to relate this, why the SMEs in Pakistan, they are less integrated globally and of course regionally. As I mentioned earlier in some SMEs policy document did not reflect it directly. And I want to something, uh, I would say new in terms of that what we here at the ADB and at the UN escape has established. I think one of the recommendation uh, in terms of the uh, developing the regional um, uh, integration from the trade uh, perspective is we need to develop the uh, trade facilitation measure for the SMEs. Unfortunately for the five components that I will very briefly elaborate now, the, uh, the trade facilitation measurement of the SMEs in Pakistan, they are quite low. For example, one of the important component is the trade related information availability for the SMEs. And unfortunately, those kind of engagement is low. Uh, there are across the country, there are designated desks, there are designated officers who provide this basic information to the SMEs. For example, here in China and in the Singapore, they do have a designated officer who basically educate the SMEs. For example, uh, we are now engaged with the F second phase of FTA with, with China. We are now currently signing the preferential trade agreement with Uzbekistan, but I don't think so that how much the SMEs in Pakistan, they are aware about the FTA that recently signed Pakistan with Uzbekistan. If they are aware, we need as designated officers in Pakistan, so there could be, the SMEs could be trained, that could be educated about the Uzbekistan markets and their standards. So this is one of the uh, consideration from the trade policy perspective that unfortunately is limited in, uh, in the SMEs in Pakistan. Uh, second is what we call them the AEO scheme, basically authorized economic operator schemes. And that is again very important. Once you opt for the AEO scheme under the EOE scheme, what they do basically for the SMEs, they enhance the international supply chain security 
and they also facilitate the legitimate trade. So once you opt for the AEO scheme, uh, the SME trade uh, are, are, are much secure and legitimized. From China, they do, once you, uh, like the SMEs in China, once you go for the um, AEO schemes, the China, the uh, government basically, they grant you additional benefits. I don't want to go to those uh, benefits, but there is a possibility. I think we need to work like other advanced countries, Australia, China, and some of the regional economies, they are also now opting for the EEO scheme. So really, I think we, uh, as, a, as, a, as a SMEs in Pakistan, we need to work for them to integrate the SMEs in Pakistan with the AEO scheme. Third is about the utilization of the single window. Uh, we are in the recent past, Pakistan has developed the single window operations, but currently I'm not exactly sure how much the SMEs in Pakistan, they are utilizing or they are connected with the single window operations in Pakistan. Azerbaijan here in the Karek region has, has, has done a tremendous work here a number of initiatives that basically facilitate the SMEs in, uh, in, in, uh, in Azerbaijan is, is integrated with the single window operations. So I will urge here that we need to integrate the SMEs in Pakistan with the single window so that we can develop the trade uh, integration and facilitate the trade um, uh, domestically and of course with the regional economies. The fourth important component that is related to the trade facilitation uh, is about the engagement of the SMEs in their respective trade facilitation committees, right? I would again give an example from Bangladesh and India. Their representative from the SMEs, they are part of the trade facilitation committees, but, and they are, they are a designated uh, kind of uh, engagement and they facilitate the SMEs priorities, objectives, in those trade facilitation committees. And again, I would urge here that how much uh, we can make those trade facilitation committee membership more effective, they should, be, they should be encouraged. And lastly, from the trade facilitation perspective, there are a number of uh, measurement across the, uh, I would say the regional economies. For example, Piragoye, they had introduced a very simplifying export kind of a facilitation for the SMEs by facilitating their postal services. And that kind of encouragement, the postal infrastructure encouragement in Paraguay, that has been facilitated there. Similarly, from the Republic of Moldova, a smaller country in the Eastern Europe, they do have an e-commerce facilitation for the SMEs. So, uh, Manur, there's a numbers of initiatives that had been there across the region. And we can also relate some of those economies in the, to the context of SMEs in Pakistan. So I stop here uh, looking forward for the, for the discussion, but what I would urge here is that I think these five components that need to be reflected very explicitly in 2021 SMEs policies, um, uh, though you guys have mentioned the demand side and the supply sides that are very much important, especially the financing side of the SMEs. We need like a very holistic kind of a pragmatic approach for the financing aspect as well. And I do think that my colleagues later from the State Bank of Pakistan will elaborate more on their side. But from the trade, trade perspective, I want to uh, highlight some of these issues. So I stop here, Manur, for a while. Thank you very much, Dr. Samad. Uh, indeed, uh, your uh, interventions were quite elaborate and uh, very important as well. Uh, learning from best practices across the world is highly important to uh, bring our economies at par with them. But more importantly, it's, it's even more important to learn from from the regional economies uh, that are not that far from home. From home. Um, I think our neighbors are one prime example of that. Uh, moving on, G, I'd like to request Dr. Uh, Mr. Sheryar Tahir for his interventions. So, so um, there are certain, quite a lot of demand side hurdles by which SMEs are greatly discouraged. So in your opinion, what are some of those practical measures that can help improve market accessibility and public procurement? And um, in addition to this, I'd also like to ask you, how can you improve uh, human and physical capital according to this technology to have sustainable SMEs? Thank you very much, uh, Manur. I will go to the background mein jaunga, just to bring some perspective into the whole exercise for SME development and the what was the intent of the government when they uh, assigned this task to SMEDA to develop this SMB policy 2021. Uh, by the way, this is uh, the second 
uh, version or the updated version, the first ever SME policy in Pakistan was in 2007, uh, which was developed by SPIDA. Uh, this one uh, in 2021, uh, 2021 was an extensive exercise which took us almost two years in terms of uh, a very extensive um, interaction with all stakeholders, both from public and private sector. Uh, to come up with recommendations are, which are very concrete and also follow up uh, by a mechanism for the implementation of SME policy. Uh, so our learning was based on the SME policy 20, uh, 2007, where a uh, lot of interventions as mentioned uh, by our colleagues here were uh, almost same. However, this time around our focus has been to actually uh, uh, divide the policy into two uh, basic pillars. One uh, aims at uh, reforming policy and regulatory environment for uh, SMEs. And the second one, as already mentioned uh, by our colleagues from STPI and Dr. Samrat, uh, is to address the demand and supply side constraint for uh, SME growth. Now, having said that, SME top, uh, subject itself cannot be addressed by one ministry or one organization. It is a combination of different arms of the uh, government of Pakistan. Uh, it, and the story doesn't even end here. A uh, lot of uh, activities are being carried out in the private sector. So how do you uh, balance all these different activities which are being done in private sector and public sector uh, is, was the uh, ultimate objective for the SME policy. Now, a very important aspect of this policy, which is uh, right now working very effectively, uh, is the National Coordination Committee, which is being chaired by the Minister for Industries and Production. And then we have uh, provincial working groups, uh, which are headed by the chief secretaries of respective uh, uh, provincial uh, provinces. Uh, there are also technical working groups, which look at uh, different aspects, both from demand and uh, supply side, and uh, you talked about um, uh, access to finance, skill development and other issues. So we have technical working groups that uh, include both public and private sector. So uh, it, having said this, uh, the mechanism is there. Now, the other thing which is important in terms of policy implementation is to have a very clear roadmap because at the end of the day, policy is uh, the intent of the government which to benefit its uh, uh, target audience. Now, in this policy, we have a very concrete action plan, which uh, is being actively taken up both at national and provincial, provincial levels. And there's a uh, regular follow-up uh, meetings held uh, both at national and provincial uh, levels. Now, uh, you mentioned four key thematic areas for the policy. Uh, however, when we talk, we, when we see the uh, overall ecosystem for SME development, it uh, um, although the framework can be divided into the supply side and demand side constraints, however, we are looking at uh, various uh, focus areas within the policy. So we started off uh, by defining what is SME definition. You briefly highlighted and you define, you shared with the audience that. Uh, there's now a bifurcation and one criteria for SME development. So that uh, itself uh, is the basis for all the interventions that the government intends to undertake. So from that perspective, SME definition and having a consensus on one definition, uh, which has been now adapted, adopted by uh, State Bank of Pakistan and uh, SCCPFER was a very important step. Now the government is focused on providing this incentive regime under one uh, agreed upon definition for SMEs. Uh, earlier on, this was not the case. Uh, regulatory tax environment, we all already know that uh, it is one of the biggest challenges and constraint for SMEs. So there have been very specific uh, issues that, that have been taken up uh, in the policy that relate to uh, the regulatory and tax uh, uh, authorities. A lot of work has already been gone into it. Uh, I think this is probably not the forum to discuss each and individual uh, activity, but we would be more than happy to take up any questions that relate to um, any specific interventions that the government uh, has taken already. 
infrastructure again uh, so uh, is very important for SMEs. We've been working with the provincial governments uh, for them to uh, have access to uh, land. And that's also, uh, if you are aware that uh, generally we, uh, these uh, SMEs are present in form of clusters. The other uh, setup is of the, the special economic zones or industrial uh, zones or small industries states. Now, the land cost itself is one of the biggest impediments when it comes to uh, setting up a, a, a facility for SME sector. So we have proposed and we are working on a land lease model, which is something new when it comes to the policy environment in Pakistan. Uh, business uh, development services, we have itself is a, a key player in uh, providing different facilities for SMEs and the aim is, uh, and this also uh, by the way relates to uh, the topic today that uh, in order to make these uh, SMEs export ready, they would need these uh, services which includes uh, non-financial banking services as well as handholding support which would include uh, training and capacity building both on soft, skill, soft skills entrepreneurship as well as technical uh, skills which fall under the vocational training area. Uh, women entrepreneurship is a key focus uh, of this policy this time around. Uh, we are in touch with different donors and organizations, uh, including UN Women and FAO, uh, to kickstart pro uh, projects which uh, focus directly on women entrepreneurship. By the way, I'll, I'll come to the market access uh, at, the, at the last. I have a few more areas that I briefly want to touch upon uh, so that uh, we can focus more on the market access area. So access to finance, our colleague from State Bank of Pakistan are here. So we, we, uh, it, the recommendation in the SME policy which relate to access to finance has been jointly drafted and agreed upon uh, primarily between SPP and SPIDA but uh, other stakeholders, both from public and private sector have been consulted. Uh, when you look at the recommendations, uh, which deal with access to finance, uh, skills and human resource. Again, uh, as you would know that uh, there are different organizations within the public and private sector, which focus on uh, specific areas. So TEFTAs in provinces and NAVTEC uh, at the federal level, as well as specific training uh, institutes, uh, uh, including the, um, the Pakistan Institute of Management, which is also part of Ministry of Industries, uh, are the organizations that have been working in this area. Now, the objective of, of this policy is, was to bring all the activities uh, which are happening for SMEs in this specific uh, focus area under one umbrella and give a direction so they can all these activities can complement each other and synergies are built so uh, it the policy doesn't necessarily only rely on on the uh, hardcore or the specific uh, action agenda points but this policy also brings about that change which is required for these organizations to work together uh, Again, uh, now, if we are talking about market access and trade, uh, entrepreneurship, innovation uh, is one of the key areas. And we've seen that in terms of uh, startups and uh, freelance uh, uh, young enterprises, I think we, we uh, are on the right trajectory. And um, uh, I think uh, the, the ranking for, us, uh, for Pakistan is about third or fourth fastest growing market in the world. So uh, that is something that is already happening. So we would want to, uh, the government is, uh, would want to do these activities which uh, continue to support uh, the uh, momentum which has on, already been built. Uh, now, this also leads us to address another issue which is the, uh, the private sector um, initiatives. We've seen that uh, there has been a lot of activities uh, which uh, have been um, affected by uh, exogenous factors. A uh, lot of uh, uh, activities on the other hand from in the private sector has been on a self-initiative basis and there was no specific uh, incentive regime built. Now the idea for 
for increasing uh, these specific uh, areas is to build an incentive regime so that we can increase the scale and scope of these activities. So we are talking about, uh, let's say, IT startups or AI, which is uh, right now one of the key areas that uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology is looking at. So uh, we then suggest, and this policy uh, forms the basis through which we can suggest uh, areas where specific organizations, institutions, which are mandated to take up their activity uh, can be uh, asked to focus on specific area and bring about that SME perspective. Now, in terms of access to finance, which is a core area for today's uh, discussion, uh, market access, demand side, you mentioned, is primarily uh, Ministry of Commerce is the key custodian of uh, minister of uh, the demand side driven uh, initiatives. Uh, TDAP, as most of you would know, is the key organization that works uh, in uh, organizing exhibitions uh, and uh, providing that link uh, for SMEs uh, in the international market. Uh, we have been working very actively with TDAP in order to ensure that every exhibition that Pakistan participates in uh, has, a, um, has a representation of new SMEs. Now, because our uh, economy is primarily SME driven, 99% plus of all our economic establishments are SMEs. So in order to bring about that change, we would want other new entrants in the SME sector to uh, basically be included in the international uh, markets with the products and services. Now we deal with that subject, supply side, we deal with that. Uh, we build their capacities both technologically and uh, in terms of uh, how to approach international markets while the, exec the uh, opportunity which exists in the international market is then taken up by TDAP. So we have, uh, an MOU with TDAP through which identify we, we carry on these activities on an ongoing basis. Now, in addition to that, and it, another important area which picked up a uh, uh, lot of attention from our private sector is the e-commerce. Uh, when you talk about small enterprises, these uh, startups, uh, mostly in uh, formal informal sector, uh, e-commerce is something that uh, has given Pakistani uh, SMEs uh, a lot of boost. So uh, as you would know that there is also an SME, uh, there's an um, e-commerce policy, uh, which uh, uh, is now being implemented in Pakistan. And uh, Samita's role in that uh, is specifically to train people uh, for them to be able to access these international markets. And then this whole uh, chain is then completed when uh, further handholding is done by uh, TDAP. So at the end of the day, it is all about uh, making sure that different actors, different stakeholders who are mandated to support SMEs uh, know exactly what the, the other organization is doing. There is uh, no duplication. There is efficiency in the activities that are being done. So ultimately this policy uh, provides that basis so that all organizations work towards a common goal and there's no wastage or duplication of uh, resources, resource deployment uh, in this area. So I think I would stop uh, here and uh, maybe in the question answer session or if there's any specifics that uh, are required to be addressed, we've, uh, we are available. Thank you very much, Sherry Arsab. Um, of course, yes, there will be uh, question answer session at the end if time allows. Uh, I'd like to move on to Mr. Nazar Shahzad now. Uh, sir, as an important uh, uh, regulatory figure in the trade milieu of Pakistan, um, I'd like to ask you that how does the central bank uh, view the importance of SMEs in the context of international trade and economic development? And uh, what financial mechanism or instruments does the State Bank of Pakistan provide to SMEs uh, when it comes to participation in the international trade? And lastly, sir, I'd also like you to address that how does the State Bank of Pakistan encourage SMEs to adopt digital solutions and technologies to streamline their international trade uh, operations? 
thank you mehnoor assalam alaikum uh, first of all i would like to inform that state bank of pakistan is a, a constantly working to provide an enabling regulatory environment to banks for smooth financing to western sector uh, for this purpose uh, state bank has taken various initiatives uh, i would uh, divide those initiatives into three categories uh, one related to national sme policy uh, first of all and then i would like to tell about uh, some of the uh, incentive schemes that are uh, being run by state bank of pakistan to provide concessional financing to sme and uh, thirdly i would like to some uh, general incentives like uh, credit entity schemes and uh, and supply chain multi bank uh, platform that we are working currently to provide an enabling regulatory environment to SMEs. So, firstly, as mentioned in the national SME policy, uh, we have uh, adopted unified SME definition uh, and uh, we have uh, issued circulars to all banks uh, regarding adoption of unified definition under which the uh, criteria for number of employees has been abolished. Uh, so, uh, all banks have adopted this definition. Uh, secondly, State Bank of Pakistan have uh, uh, allocated uh, uh, targets for SME financing as per national SME policy. And uh, we have allocated target of uh, 800 billion uh, up till 2025. Further, we are also working uh, for the convenience of SMEs, uh, like uh, SMEs are uh, less aware about uh, State Bank of Pakistan initiative, initiatives or banks products. So we are uh, holding continuous uh, capacity building sessions, uh, seminars, trainings, uh, our uh, uh, training of Omnibaf, um, National Institute of Banking and Finance, and our uh, SBP BSE regional offices are working with SME associations uh, to arrange uh, uh, sessions, awareness sessions, or SME uh, refinance schemes. Capacity building of banks regarding SME, uh, uh, their, their SME product development and about SME, State Bank of Pakistan SME refinance schemes. Uh, we have also simplified a loan application form for the small enterprise and medium enterprises uh, in collaboration with the PBA. And now there is standardized application form uh, of about one and a half page. Earlier it was about uh, different banks have different forms of that were ranging about eight to 10 pages. So we have simplified application form. Uh, so uh, if you uh, look at the financial stream that we are providing at State Bank of Pakistan, so we have launched a number of uh, concessional refinance schemes uh, that are short term, uh, as well as long term. To provide long term financing, uh, we have launched a, a refinance scheme for modernization of SMEs. Uh, under this scheme, uh, banks can provide financing for long term uh, plant and machinery. For if, if example, if a SME wants to uh, purchase plant and machinery, or uh, if so, then the data semi can avail financing up to 200 billion from one bank or from multi bank bank at a concessional markup rate of uh, up to six percent uh, for a, this scheme is available for a, a period of 10 years uh, so this is a, a facility for the smes uh, under which they can uh, avail long-term financing for the 10 years at a concessional markup rate of 6%. Uh, this was long-term scheme. So similarly, for to address the short-term liquidity requirements of the SMEs, uh, State Bank of Pakistan has also launched a dedicated scheme uh, for the SMEs, uh, that is working capital scheme. Under this scheme, the SMEs can avail financing up to 50 million uh, at a concessional markup rate of 6%. But this scheme is uh, available for, uh, for eight dedicated sectors. Uh, we are working to include other sectors uh, uh, under this scheme, but currently this scheme is uh, available for eight dedicated sectors, which IIT, 
that is uh, available. And uh, then we are, uh, there is chairman, jewelry, there is printing and press and uh, printing and packaging. So there are a number of sectors, but we are also considering to include more sector uh, as per the demand of uh, SME sector under the scheme. Uh, similarly, there is a dedicated scheme for women entrepreneurs. Realizing the fact that uh, women are a deprived segment of our uh, uh, society and banks are reluctant to lend uh, loans to women, uh, we have launched a dedicated scheme. Uh, and under this scheme, the markup rate has been kept at 5%. So if a woman wants to do any business, uh, if she is already doing a business or she wants to uh, uh, initiate a new business, uh, then that woman can avail financing under this scheme uh, up to 5 million. And this scheme is available for five years. Uh, so this scheme is dedicated for women. Uh, similarly, uh, if you look at the national SME policy, uh, there is a, a scheme, a SME Asan Fana scheme, uh, as shortly called as SAF scheme, uh, that was uh, mainly launched to provide collateral free financing uh, to SME. So this scheme uh, was very successful scheme. Uh, and under this scheme, uh, financing up to 10 million uh, was provided uh, to SMEs uh, without any collateral at a concessional markup rate of 9%. So these are uh, some refinance schemes which are being provided by State Bank of Pakistan. Uh, similarly, Government of Pakistan uh, has also launched a Prime Minister Youth Business and Agriculture Loan Scheme. Uh, under this scheme, financing uh, up to 7.5 million is available uh, to all SMEs uh, as well as agriculture sector. Uh, and the markup rate has been kept from 0 to 7%. Uh, the financing of up to 5 lakh is uh, without any collateral and without any interest rate. So this is very lucrative schemes uh, for the SMEs uh, as well as agriculture sector as well. But the main uh, issue we identified uh, during our session, the awareness session with SMEs that the SMEs are not aware about uh, these uh, in, in incentive schemes of Trade Bank of, of Pakistan. Uh, so we are in collaboration with MEDA are working to create awareness uh, among the SMEs that they can avail these opportunities of State Bank of Pakistan to scale up and international and their participate in international trade. So these are some uh, financial uh, incentives that are being provided by State Bank of Pakistan. Uh, similarly, I would like to highlight one uh, key initiative uh, that we are uh, uh, taking uh, to provide uh, further financing to SMEs. Uh, this is uh, regarding the uh, establishment of credit guarantee company. Uh, State Bank in collaboration with the government of Pakistan uh, is working to establish a national credit guarantee company. The company has been established and in the process of operationalization. So once the company will be operationalized, it will provide uh, risk coverage uh, to banks on their financing to SMEs. Uh, it may be around 90% uh, discoverage, uh, uh, so it will depend upon the uh, risk profile of the banks. Uh, uh, so this uh, will also boost financing to uh, SMEs once the company is uh, operationalized. Uh, so these are the sum of the key initiatives on which the State Bank of Pakistan uh, is working. Uh, similarly, regarding digitalization uh, of the SMEs, uh, we have recently launched an innovation challenge fund uh, that was being given to uh, banks in the form of grant. The objective was only to provide digitalized solutions to SMEs. So the, that, that the banks have to create some, uh, take some innovations uh, from global uh, market that they can implement in Pakistan and provide digitalized solutions uh, to uh, SMEs. So as, as State Bank of Pakistan is extensively working uh, 
to provide digital solutions to SMEs so they can decrease their cost uh, and effectively uh, play their role in the international market. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mazhar Saab. Um, I absolutely agree with you, Jay, that uh, there's a lack of awareness amongst several SMEs. And unfortunately, there's also this communication barrier that exists between the public and private sector. But I'm glad that you were able to join us today in this session and let us all know about the different initiatives that the central bank um, has worked on and has launched as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to wrap up the first round of our uh, question and answer session. Perhaps before I move on to Dr. Hassan Daud, but I'd just like to request all my panelists to please give their top three recommendations uh, regarding the subject. So perhaps I'd like to start with uh, Ms. Sahar Malik. In case you're speaking, you're, you're on mute, then you'd have to unmute yourself. Gee, the main uh, focus for me, uh, to be honest, I have seen ke, uh, uh, whatever the uh, uh, people, you people are recommending, my main, uh, because I, as I am a practitioner of procurement and supply chain, I keep on saying that is the one of the biggest, uh, you know, um, a factor which is affecting our SMEs not to grow is the you know supply chain and uh, we are not giving the trainings for it we are not actually preparing our smes to uh, actually uh, to actually cope up for for the international market we have not uh, created any industrial uh, linkages uh, between the academia and you know that is that is one of the reason which i believe uh, sme whatever the financial inclusion and the the way everyone is supporting that is something which is uh, which will always uh, you know uh, not show a growth because of the um, trainings which is not being provided and that is the trainings which is required is of a product development according to the international market and the hand holding uh, to uh, you know get this uh, training of supply chain to you know help the sustainability of uh, businesses so this is something which is my recommendation that we need to include uh, you know other than financial and technology training to include the subjects to you know be a kind of the stakeholder is being not being uh, you know utilized properly Thank you very much, Ji. Uh, next, Dr. Samad, if I may request you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Manur. If you allow me, I will give you uh, four recommendations. Uh, the, the first one uh, is about the, uh, as I mentioned in my discussion, that how we can basically develop the manufacturing based of the SMEs. I think that would really require uh, to integrate the SMEs in Pakistan with the regional economies. And at the same time, it's required for the competitiveness level enhancement in the uh, in Pakistan. So that is the first recommendation. Uh, second one uh, that I mentioned, the five important components that are required to facilitate the SME trade. And I think uh, the most important one uh, was that also mentioned by my colleague from uh, State Bank of Pakistan, that how we can uh, bring in the awareness uh, for the SMEs. I think that is really important. And I think, as I mentioned, their level of information, especially knowing the trade-related information is absolutely missing. The third important component, and I think that is about how we can enhance the level of the competitiveness. I think we require an entrepreneurial ecosystem. And unfortunately, if we look into the SMEs in Pakistan, I think still the level of innovation is, I would say, almost zero. If we compare ourselves with the rest of the, I would say, a little advanced economy, their SMEs are quite engaged uh, in the level of innovation. We can definitely see that they have been uh, producing the inventions in terms of the patents in their economies. Last recommendation is about the, I think really we need to urge ourselves for, for the digitalization. And I think there's a lot that still required that how we can improve the infrastructure of the SMEs in Pakistan so that they can basically, their reliance on the digitalization will be easy. 
But the most important one while we are discussing the digitalization is about the regulation. The regulatory environment, I think, is the most important for the enhancement of the trade integrations in the level of competitiveness in Pakistan. So these are Mahnoor broader four uh, kind of recommendations for today's discourse. So I stop here. Thank you very much, Dr. Samad. Uh, next, Sharia Saab, uh, you're of course part of the public sector. So perhaps um, any recommendations for the private sector or recommendations in general that you have? The, uh... सब तो पहले तो जी एक हमारा एसएमई सेक्टर और जो लार्ज एंटरप्राइजेस है उसमें बेसिक फर्क ये है कि लार्ज एंटरप्राइजेस थिंक अहेड दे वुड प्लान देयर एक्टिविटीज 5 फॉर 5 इयर्स डाउन द रोड द इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन राइट नाउ माइट नॉट बी कंडूसिव टू स्टार्टिंग समथिंग इमीडिएटली गिवन द मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशंस ऑफ पाकिस्तान एंड द वर्ल्ड इन जनरल सो आई थिंक वन ऑफ द basic things that these SMEs in Pakistan need to um, uh, take into account is a long-term approach uh, so that they, whenever the opportunity arises, they are in a position to uh, capture that opportunity. Uh, the second is, uh, again, uh, a very important area is to uh, develop alternate uh, channels for uh, trade and exports. We've seen e-commerce picking up. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities in terms of exports of lower quantities also. So we have to uh, see where we can fetch maximum value for the products that we sell. So in Sialkot, a dental, uh, just to give you an example, uh, um, a small package uh, for dental instruments will fetch you the price of, which is equivalent to a full container load of a low value added product. So given the fact that the cost of uh, uh, supply chain as uh, uh, our uh, colleague from uh, Madam uh, Summer has mentioned that, uh, you know, the cost of uh, exporting is going high. So we need to now adapt ourselves to these new realities and start exporting where uh, we can uh, minimize our cost in terms of export. Uh, finally, uh, SMEs also need to realize that if buyers are not coming to Pakistan, how can you take your products to the buyers? Uh, there have been examples where these major uh, tourist hubs uh, have become uh, venues for uh, these uh, uh, products such as ours. So uh, making up emporiums for Pakistani products abroad is something that is also recommended as, well as an initiative for, uh, for the SMEs and the SME policy. Uh, I can go on, but I think these uh, are the main areas that we would want to focus on. Thank you very much, Jeev. Uh, Mazhar Saab, if you can go next, please. Yeah, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, can you hear me? Hassan Saab, ek second. Uh, we're just left with one more speaker for his recommendations. Sir, I'll just uh, ask you to speak. Okay. Thank you, Manu. Uh, so, uh, as uh, uh, Ms. Sara was uh, telling that supply chain financing is a very key area. According to a, to a recent IFC study that Pakistan has the potential of 18 to 20 billion dollars of supply, supply chain financing. So we need to focus on uh, this area and for this purpose, State Bank of Pakistan is working to establish a multi-bank technology platform uh, that would enable banks, uh, SMEs and buyers for digital onboarding. So one is supply chain financing. Uh, secondly, I also already mentioned and as uh, mentioned by Dr. Samad that uh, the banks as well as SMEs lack awareness. So there is a uh, lack of awareness about SME's uh, uh, products, there is a lack of awareness uh, at banks and about State Bank of Pakistan, uh, policy major State Bank of Pakistan uh, refinance schemes. So we need to uh, create more awareness among SMEs and banks about uh, uh, SME-related uh, knowledge. Uh, thirdly, we need to promote digitalization. So we have also, State Bank of Pakistan have also introduced the concept of digital banks. And we are working to provide uh, 
lessons to digital banks. Uh, so digitalization is a key uh, to reduce cost and make effective uh, financing to SMEs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ji. Uh, with this, I the question and answer and the discussion and the question and answer session comes to an end. Uh, before we uh, proceed to end this session, I'd like to invite Dr. Hassan Daoud Bhatt for his remarks and a vote of thanks. So over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Zainab, and uh, all, all the colleagues who've spoken. And I think, uh, you know, I, I start with the Chinese quote, which says, there is the nest first. And I think we are in the process of building that nest. We are in the process of understanding how best practice, global best practices happen and how good the impact our SME secondly move to Urdu because at least in the yes part most of the, there is a lack of education and awareness and I think usko jab bhi hum koi bhi recommendation in place karein ya koi bhi baat hum karein in terms of uh, promoting or leveraging a sector uske andar hume jo uh, local environment local culture ko zahin mein zaroor rakhna hai because if you can't do that, then perhaps you will not be able to get the extreme benefit out of this. And I've been part of this process for the last 10 years at least. So now we have reached that stage, and despite the huge potential, despite you know one of or two of your province only you deal with SME sector and trading, we have reached that stage that we can tell what does it mean, what does it mean, what does it mean, what does it mean. Or startup ka kya matlab hai? It took us so long and you know a lot of hard work went into this. Or is ke liye ab jab hum is uh, stage pe pahunch chuke hain and I think with that the role of the state bank is quite critical. Ke wo access to finance, especially female led SMEs ko zaroor kare. Or jab hum baat karte hain female led SMEs ki to uske jo social economic dimension hai wo bahut critical hai. Or is he liye aap ke paas koi desk hona chahiye aur aap ensure kare tamam banks ke andar ke unke paas desk ho jo ke do kaam kare. Ek to ye ke naturally access to finance kare but capacity building and likewise knowledge sharing or knowledge creation pe zaroor kaam kare. Kyunki agar un khawateen ko nahi pata ke wo kya kare. And I was head of the e-commerce council in KP and in, during COVID time we were able to export a, a large uh, quantum of uh, exports uh, outside uh, Pakistan. So I think e-commerce ki baat bhi hui, but I think jab aap e-commerce ki baat karte hain, to access to technology or access to internet facility baut zaroori hai. Aur jab aap Islamabad se nikalte hain, to aapka 4G, uh, 3G ho jata hai, aur jab KP ke paas pahunchte hain, to wo 2G ho jata hai, aur aap jab KP se aage jata hain, Peshawar se aage, to wo te kareeban 0.5G reh jata hai. So in this environment, you can't get facilities, can't get dividends, can't get So I think access to technology, access of internet services, quality of internet services is very important. The role of chamber is very important. I think the role of chamber is ignored a lot. And I was very happy to see the private sector input in this. Chambers converge and linkages create kare, government, business and academia. Or just tarah aapne baat ki, uh, one of the speakers spoke about long-term challenges. I think long-term ki jaga in the current uh, global environment situation, wahan par aapko long-term ki jaga, aapko incrementally step-by-step, phase-by-phase aage jana padega by taking short-term decision and mid-term decisions. Or phir usse aap graduate kare and move into long-term. Thirdly, you have to make sure that in your country, in the regional countries, you have such models available that have reached now they have reached to global top 10 based on their SME sector promotion. Their SME sector, like in China, like in Vietnam, like in Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, they started with SME sector and then graduated to, uh, to large-scale manufacturing and then perhaps now in the technology and space arena. So, this is why you have to do the bedrock of the SME sector. Hai. And for a country like Pakistan, which has challenges, I think your SME sector can easily take you out of these challenges. Lastly, when we were making the commerce and trade strategy of KP, I think you have to do the competitiveness. Ki. But 
कॉम्पिटेटिवनेस है कि वो बहुत जरूरी है सेक्टर टू अंडरस्टैंड और उसके लिए चेंबर और एकेडेमिया का रोल बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट लास्टली हम बहुत अरसे से ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस की बात कर रहे हैं आई थिंक वी हैव कम टू अ स्टेज जहां पे ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस शुड क्रिएट द राइट काइंड ऑफ ईज वरना सिर्फ ये बातें रह जाएंगी और आपकी हर विंडो के अंदर 10 विंडोज होंगी आपको अपनी एनओसी रिजीम आप वन साइज फिट ऑल पे नहीं जा सकते आपको सेक्टर देखना होगा लेबर लॉज जहाँ पे एप्लीकेबल हैं वहां पर आप जाएं और लेबर लॉज अप्लाई करें जहाँ पे एनवायरनमेंट स्टैंडर्ड्स आपने इंश्योर करने वहां जरूर करें बट ये नहीं हो सकता कि आप एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में अगर कोई एसएमई है और अगर यू नो स्मॉल इंजीनियरिंग फॉर्म है उसके अंदर है तो उनको दोनों को एक ही स्टैंडर्ड से आप व्यू करें एंड देट इज ट्रू फॉर बैंकिंग ऑल्सो सो मैं सिर्फ यहाँ पर लास्टली एक बड़ी नाइव किस्म की एक बात करने लगा बट प्लीज बेयर विद मी ऑन दैट आई थिंक हमें अब लो हैंगिंग फ्रूट्स की तरफ नहीं देखना हमने उन फ्रूट्स की तरफ देखना है जो जमीन पे गिरे हुए हैं और वो uh, सड़ रहे हैं या रॉटन हो रहे हैं वी हैव टू पिक दोज फ्रूट अप लुक एट हाउ वी कैन कन्वर्ज ऑल स्टेक होल्डर्स एंड पर नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स अंडर दी एस एम ई पॉलिसी ब्रिंग टेंजिबल रिजल्ट और कोई पॉलिसी अगर उसके अंदर मॉनिटरिंग एंड एवेलुएशन मैकेजम नहीं है तो फिर आप किसी तरह भी फायदा नहीं उठा सकते प्लीज याद रखिए एक्सेस टू फाइनेंस नॉट नेसेसरिली मीन्स कि जो आप चाहेंगे और आप जो नंबर देना चाहते हैं उसके अगेंस्ट आप एस एम ई सेक्टर को अट्रैक्ट कर सकते हैं बिकॉज देर आर कल्चरल डायमेंशन टू वॉट एक्सेस टू फाइनेंस मीन्स टू दैम तो आपने प्रैप्स उनको डोर स्टेप पे जाना होगा उनको एजुकेट करना होगा और उनको लेवरेज करना होगा और की डेफिनेशन होगा अगर आप ये तमाम मेयर्स कर लें सम ऑफ द ग्रेट रिकमेंडेशन दैट इज बीन मेड आई थिंक वी हैव अ ब्राइट फ्यूचर एसएमई सेक्टर दिस कंट्री कैन नॉट प्रोग्रेस विदाउट द एसएमई सेक्टर इट इज आवर बैकबोन एंड लेट्स ऑल ऑफ आर स्टेक होल्डर सिट टुगेदर एंड परहेप्स एनकरेज देम टू टेक अ स्टेप फॉरवर्ड एनकरेज द गवर्नमेंट टू टेक अ स्टेप बैकवर्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ एनओसी एंड रिजीम एंड देन परहेप्स वी विल बी एबल टू अचीव Uh, and make this country a great country as it really is thank you thank you very much dr hasan uh, with this i'd like to say that uh, we've come to the conclusion of our session uh, thank you very much for all that have joined us panelists and participants alike uh, of course uh, if anyone has any uh, further discussion that they'd like to do uh, they can always email us uh, contact us through our social media uh, platforms as well uh until next time ji thank you very much take care allah hafiz and also on on behalf of sdpi on behalf of sdpi i will also say that if academia wants to do some research we are we are open for any any joint uh, research exercise that we can do absolutely ji bilkul bilkul thank you very much ji take care allah hafiz thank you ji have a great day bye bye